Hello, lights. Reverend Joya here to help you live your best vibe. Today, we're going to talk about releasing and letting go of the small self. I have decided that I'm going to start sharing so much more of my downloads I receive every morning. I write in my journals. I've been doing this for a couple of years and doing this stream of consciousness writing uh, where I do channel the Magdalene Council. And that's what they told me they're called is the Magdalene Council. And I'm going to keep a lot of it to myself because of, I have I don't have permission to let let it all out yet. But I do have permission to start talking about more of this um, knowledge that's been given to me that's helped me to transform my own life. And they're simple, powerful truths that really, for me, just have this way of unlocking this mental shift that happens in me, not only mentally, but like it unlocks me at a cellular level. So that's why I want to start sharing more of this wisdom and talking about the small self. Uh, coming up as I'm doing more public speaking and getting on bigger stages and coming out of the, um, I want to say spiritual closet about why I do the work I do with sound and how it's been not only a passion, but how it's been what I came to do. What I literally came to this planet to do is to do sound and not, not just sound baths, but I'm talking about utilizing your own vocal power. The power of your own voice unlocks this profound true self that is locked away and hidden inside of you. Unless you happened to be raised by enlightened parents who saw this light or who also emanate this light and brought it out of you and let it be what infuses your personality and drives the consciousness of your being. I've shared so many shared. <laughs> that was a funny way to say that. I've shared so many times about my experience of having that out of body experience where my consciousness left my body on December 6th, 2022. I've shared this story so many times and I looked down at myself and everywhere, all the people around me and just said, what vibration of consciousness do you want animating your body? And since that time, I've really done the deep work to answer that question and the, the answer to that question for me more and more was to align my, div my divinity, align with my own divinity, align with the light, that aspect of the divine light source that lives inside of me, that lives inside of you, that lives inside of all of us. And I really saw this vision of like a, a pyramid, like a, a crystal, right? Have you ever seen, or a prism? It would be a better thing, but I saw it really big. But if you picture a prism the pure light source comes in through the prism and then it shines out this rainbow light. And that is the same for us, that we are the prisms and this light comes in and we shine out this rainbow light, this rainbow light being us, being our gifts and our talents and our, our abilities and our vibration of being. It's not really anything that we're even doing in the world. It's who we're being in the world while we're doing whatever we're doing in the world. And I think I've shared before about some of the most profound spiritual encounters and people that I've met have been uh, people doing very menial in the eyes of the world jobs. One of whom was a man who worked at the airport lounge in the American, you know, sky lounges for first class passengers. And he greeted every single person and when he came by, and he didn't have to do that. He came, he greeted everybody and said, welcome. Let me take you on a tour. What can I get you? Sit down, be comfortable. Like he really went out of his way. And this was, he didn't have to do any of this. And when he came to pick up my glass, I said, please sit, let's talk for a minute. And he sat down and we chatted. And um, he taught me a lot about divinity that he said, I said, you know, why do you do this with so much joy? And he said to me, uh, well, we just had a really deep conversation, first of all. And then I said, you know, why do you, why do you do this with so much joy? And he said, because I'm being of service and I really believe that I'm serving the, the Christ in everybody that I meet. And I said, wow, I really, I see that in you and I so appreciate it. And you taught me so much. And he said, you, madam, have pierced my consciousness. And I just loved how he said that. He said, you, you, madam, have pierced my consciousness. Thank you for piercing my consciousness. And I just was like, wow. And I said the same to him. I said, you pierced my consciousness and you really transformed um, something inside of me 
that my my small self ego is like I could never work as a waitress or a waiter at an airport lounge and like there honestly there is something inside of me at that time that would have been um, embarrassed shall we say to do that kind of a job and like more and that embarrassment comes from being concerned with how the world is perceiving me how is the world perceiving me how are these people perceiving me whereas I'm not the one being in alignment with what I'm allied to. So what we're allied to, what we're creating a, an alliance to is what we are to align to. And so in that feeling of, oh, I could never do this job because I'm worried about what other people think about me. That's really what's underneath that feeling, right? Is, is an alliance to my small self ego that has the need to show up in this grand way in the world, even though the inside self is hidden, the true self is hidden. And it's buried beneath the masks of that small self ego. And the small self ego doesn't just show up in, in the big show-offy um, Ferrari driving, look at me on Instagram, make millions of dollars, that kind of personality, that kind of persona. It also shows up in those shameful feelings of hiding. The small self also shows up in the hiding. It really, really does. It's all the same. Anytime that we are operating from a standpoint of how does the world perceive me, I don't want to be perceived, or I'm projecting this false self onto the world, we're operating from our small self ego. And the small self ego is always self-serving. It's always about me, 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 me. And so when I was journaling about this in my journal here, what came across, and I want to read it to you, I will read it to you verbatim, what came through. Uh, was I was I was talking about uh, something I'm experiencing right now, and it's a very deep learning. It's like the root of my small self ego. It's the root of the rubble under which I have buried my true self, and I'm at the root of that rubble. And it's painful. It is. It is such an embodied feeling. It is such an embodied sense of um, of needing to hide because the pain of this particular feeling is so tremendous that I hide from it. And so it, the pain is always there and it's the hiding from the pain that perpetuates the pain. And so that's what I want to read about uh, what I've learned from what the Magdalene council told me. So this is what she said. Um, I was asking some questions, which I'm not going to share because they're deeply personal. And uh, she said, number one, remember to keep what sacred secret. So that's what I do. Keep what sacred secret until she says that, that I can release it. They say, and this is what she says. I said, Miriam, Miriam counsel, I need help, please. And she says, my love be still the light doesn't seek the moth. The moth seeks the light. Stop wanting and start being start knowing you can and start asking. You are afraid to ask for what you want because you so deeply fear not getting it. You fear disappointment and rejection. And so you are creating these very experiences to learn a very valuable teaching. Ask and expect to receive what you ask for. You are in preparation now, my love, and you will learn how to best teach what you know, how to sound it out, as the birds and animals sound it out, as the river sounds it out, as the ocean sounds it out, all part of the sonic symphony of the cosmos. And I said, I asked her another question and I said, I do believe in miracles. And she said, yes, you do believe in miracles, but have you asked? And I said, well, no. And she said, and do not ask while carrying disbelief. First, work on transmuting your own deep fears of not getting what you want, as in you can't get it, as you have learned this belief that you can't have what you want. And this is what you call learned helplessness, which is why these experiences bother you so much. Rejection, you fear this and disappointment hurts you. So you avoid it only to disappoint yourself. And herein lies the teaching. As you see, you are creating these experiences for the sake of asking, is this what you desire? Is this what you wish to live? Is this what you wish to create? You create your fear 
in order to see that you create your fear so you can stop creating your fear. This is growth. A child touches the stove and gets burned. She does not fear and avoid stoves for her whole life, but she learns how the stove works and she uses it correctly. She doesn't blame herself, fear the stove, and keep on touching it the same way, hoping the stove will stop burning her. That is a... Oh, my, my handwriting's terrible when I do this because I write really fast. That is adopting the victim mindset. And that is what you are doing. Stop it now and take up your cross, my love. This is your next level of growth. What do you want to create? Not what do you want, which imparts a wanting and a feeling of can't have it and don't have it and creates a coveted feeling. But what can you create? What can you create? What can you create? Ask. Ask for what it is you desire or expect. Seek where and who can satisfy this desire. Knock on the door to ask. And then she had me draw a triangle, which I'm going to share here. Ask, and she broke it down what it is. Ask. Use your voice. Your voice should come from your desire. Seek. Have the eyes to see. Knock, take aligned action. And when you knock, you go back to the ask. Miriam, I ask for clarity around my work. I need some clarity around my work and how I can best serve and create an exchange of abundance in exchange for what I, for that, which I know. And she said, what, you know, must create the change or solve the problem or satisfy the desires of another. Be the light, make a light of yourself, shine your light on the world and shine a light on your own life. Oh, and then I was sharing my desire and my vision with her about the sound center, the sound temple that I really feel called to create and what I want it to look like. This vision is really big that I have in my heart for the healing sound temple that I wish to create. And I said, I desire to be the light. I desire to be the lighted one. And then she said, why? And I said, because I love life. I love God. I love being in reverence. I love being in awe. I love being in the holy. Why? To create paradise on earth, to be in reverence, to be in healing, to spread love. And this opening of the self is the very opposite of rejection and disappointment. This is what she's telling me. Release these fears, my love. Fear not rejection. For if you are rejected, it's from other egos. Fear not disappointment. For you are all powerful and capable of creating what you desire. For in being the light, you illumine the world around you. Speak no more of rejections, fears, and disappointments. Because every word you utter to the universe is an ask. Then you yourself seek to validate your own truth and your actions. And these are your knocking on the doors of the cosmos. Be very, very mindful of your speech and be silent. And know each word you utter is an ask. For there is no word ever spoken that is not an ask, none. In the beginning was the word. And you are the word. You are the word unto yourself. Vibration. I am vibration. As I speak, I create through the process of ask. Remember these words. I am ready. Feel this in your body. Make of yourself a light. Letting go, remember in our previous conversations, is as simple as letting go. When you are done learning the lessons of the small self, put it down as a child does a toy and return to it no more. Make of yourself a light. And that's the teaching from the Magdalens this week um, about really putting down the small self and, and being mindful of the ask, which I also really love that ask the word itself is actually an acronym for ask, seek, and knock. And that it does go in a triangle. First, we have to ask, then we seek that which we are asking. And actually, we automatically seek that which we are asking. And this is what I love about these um, teachings that I'm getting from, um, from the Magdalene Council. And 
the ask, ask, seek, knock. So when we're asking and we're using our words, we're using vibrations. And when we let that vibration come from the true nature of ourself, from our heart, from our soul self, from the deep self that we truly are, then we are speaking words that are knocking on the doors of the cosmos. What's really interesting with the seek now, right, is that the human brain, the way that my understandings of neuroscience really come in handy in all of this, which is what I just love, in that the seeking is what we do automatically. We constantly seek to self-validate our own belief systems. Our brain mostly deletes all of the information that's coming in. And that's a good thing. We need it to, or we'd be just, would be completely overwhelmed with sensory information coming from the inside of our bodies and coming from our senses exterior. And so our brain really does seek to delete, 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 delete. Our neurons only do two things in our brain. They inhibit or they activate. And most of what they do is inhibit. They activate when we see what it is we wish to see that validates the truth of who we are. We really are projecting who we are out into the universe and seeing it and calling that experience back in to validate the true nature of our being. And so when she talked about, I want to read that part again, because I thought that was a really profound teaching creating how we create our fears so that we can learn to overcome our fears. Herein lies the teaching. As you see, you are creating these experiences for the sake of asking, is this what I desire? Is this what I wish to live? You create your fear in order to see that you create your fear so that you can stop creating your fear. Do you get that? That's really profound. Because we are the creators of our lives. We are the acting agents on the field, which I've talked about before. And as I align more and more and more into my own integrity of being and align more and more and more with what I'm allied to, then all of these other things really drop away. And as the light in you starts to become brighter and brighter and brighter, it really does start to illuminate these kinds of truths of your true being, of your reality, of you as the creator of your own life. And so right now, I don't know the answers to, oh, I'm just getting that why doesn't matter because I started to say, I don't know why I'm, I've been creating from the small self. And I just heard why doesn't matter. Why doesn't matter. Don't get stuck in the why loop, which is just going to send you that's wrestling with the small self again. And the more we wrestle with the small self, the more we keep the small self alive. And so why doesn't matter. It's really a matter of now uh, processing the feelings of of the creation itself, right? So when I'm creating for myself, which I know I've created over and over and over experiences of, re of rejection and disappointment, rejection and disappointment, rejection and disappointment. And I realized that those, those were handed to me as a child, those patterns, but I'm the one who's kept them on repeat as an adult. I'm the one who's kept this learned behavior going because it became a reality that was locked and stored inside of my body as a truth. So it's the vibrational truth that I'm operating from. It's my vibrational operating system. And so I'm creating that over and over and over and over and over and over again, so that I can learn not to. It's really that simple. When I take up responsibility for myself and for my life and for my experiences in life, I can ask, is this something I wish to create? And there, the reason why is it's just a pattern that's been handed down to me, but I can choose to stop living the pattern. So this is the big question, right? It's like, well, how do we stop living the pattern? How do we stop doing it? And this is where we have to go into the feeling of it. We have to be with those original vibrations that have been stored. I call it the ow, the original wounding that took place. We have to go back into that ow and really feel and be with those feelings without the need to change them, without the need to fight them, without the need to wrestle with them because they're there. They've been stored there. And so we get to go in now, and this is where the releasing and letting go process comes in that we can let it go. We can put it down. Yes, it happened. Yes, these things happened. So we can let them go and we can sound them out. I have so many videos on here about sound. I think I have an old video even from a couple of years ago when I was driving in my car and I was first discovering this very intuitive process of sounding it out. And I was just crying and 
wailing and feeling the feelings in my body and just letting it come out. And it might come out through tears. It's going to come out through sobs. It's going to come out through, through the feeling of it, through, through, the, through, through the grief of it. And that's really what this is, is it's old stored grief that's living in the body, these old patterns of behavior. And we can grieve and truly grieve and love ourselves that this was our lived human experience. None of this negates our lived human experience. This is to go deeply into our human experience so that we can become those pure crystalline prisms for the light, that that light comes in now and we're a pure conduit. There's no infractions. You know, like you look at a diamond, the more pure the diamond is, the more valuable it is. And the same is true for us. The more pure we are, the more valuable we are, the more precious we are, because we realize our preciousness, <laughs> not because there's a value that says someone's better than another person, but because we ourselves realize our inherent value. We ourselves realize our preciousness and our love that source creator of the divine has for us, that we allow this vibration of consciousness to be the vibration of Christ consciousness, this Christed consciousness, anointed consciousness, pure light consciousness that now animates the body that comes through us, in us, as us. It becomes who we are, not something that we do in our practice and then put on our masks of our small self and go about our day. That we can show up in this love, this fearless light, this fearless love. And I know that in that meditation that I did maybe a month ago, probably about a month ago now, where I came upon the light of my true self and it scared me. It was so big and so bright and so vast and so huge that my small self cowered away in a corner. It was like, ah. and the small self doesn't want to die. The small self seeks to stay alive. It's a, it's an entity. You can think of it as a gestalt that's living inside of you. And it truly is an entity and a being, the beingness of you that you yourself have created. It's a created thing inside of you. And therefore we can stop operating from our small self, but we have to do the work to feel safe inside of ourselves and to cultivate our own deep self-trust that we ourselves are not going to violate ourselves, that we ourselves are not going to harm ourselves. And anytime that we're wrestling with the small self, we are keeping the small self alive. Anytime that we wrestle with negative habits, we're keeping those negative habits alive. Anytime that we wrestle with addiction, we're keeping our addictions alive. And so it's really about not wrestling with it anymore, just seeing it, feeling it, being in it and accepting it as part of our journey. And then we can put it down and then we can let it go when we've done the work to heal the small self. So with that, let's do a little five minute guided meditation about letting go, releasing the small self. And again, I would love to invite you into my community at Vocal Lumina, where we dive into these topics every week. And then I give you one weekly practice to do every day so that you can embody these teachings so that you can actually go through these processes of not only knowing it, because we all know it now, all I have to do is go to chat GPT and ask it questions, right? We all have we, the, the knowledge playing field has been leveled. So now this is about embodying knowledge, embodying wisdom. This is about being it. This is about coming into alignment. And most of all, this is about shedding the skin of the selves we used to be so that we can step into this higher vibrational way of being that is calling us forward. Uh, it's only $14 a month. I've made it super affordable. And that's because it's not because I undervalue what I teach. It's because I really, really, really want a world where everybody has equal access to this wisdom, this knowledge, and this intelligence. And that's why I'm going to start, also start sharing all of these, um, my downloads that I receive from the Magdalens on YouTube so that these teachings are out there because it's, they can't just change my life. They're to change everybody's life because we're all the same when it comes to the divine. So you can go to school.com slash forward slash vocalumina to sign up. And not only do we have the pre-recorded content, there's a fantastic community that's being built slowly, slowly, slowly. And 
I will, I also pop on and do lots of live stuff too. So I encourage you to sign up and join school.com forward slash Vocalumina. And with that, let's dive into a five minute. I'm just going to channel a guided practice. I don't know what's going to come through, but let's find out. All right. Take a moment to close your eyes. your feet to the healing center of Mother Earth. And say, I release my small self ego attachments through my root chakra down into Mother Earth. all dead things and turns them back into life. Give myself for perpetuating patterns that no longer serve me. I forgive others for perpetuating patterns that no longer serve them, that they knew no better. energy, the pain, the suffering, the trauma, effortlessly leaving and draining out of your body through the soles of your feet. And now call upon the light of the creator. fill where that space was. It's now empty with light. Connect with your deep self. connect with my deep self and feel where you feel that deep self to live and tell it you love it I love the spark of life that lives in me I love the spark of light that lives in me I wish to fuel and grow this light in my life and I ask this light to continually reveal to me that which is small that which does not deserve to be living in this magnificent being called me and I wish to align myself to the light of my true self. Now, now, now. I 
as effortlessly as a child who is done playing with a toy, no longer wishes to play with that toy. I release these patterns that no longer serve me. I say thank you. Thank you. And I let it be so. And so it is. Deep breath in. And exhale a cleansing breath. Now, one thing to know and to be aware of, which I tell all of my clients, is to know and to be aware that when you make these kinds of declarations, that everything that arises is there to be healed, released, and cleared. And sometimes all of the messes that you've made of your life can be the first thing that come up and you'll see them first <laughs> and the, the obvious things, the chaos you're creating to manage so you don't have to manage what's really going on inside. So this is the invitation is just be with whatever arises and see it for what it is. Ask to see with eyes that can see, not with eyes that are seeing from the eyes of the problem itself. All right, my loves, I'll see you next week with another teaching. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed. Bye. 